Today, I'm going to teach you how to fix your credit and start a business at the same time. This is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it. All right. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu. And be sure to subscribe because if you want to start a new business, you want to develop wealth, this is the place to be. So with that, let's just jump into the particulars. First of all, fixing your credit is not that hard. It isn't. It really isn't that hard. What it is, is time consuming. And what I mean by that is you have to sit on it and you have to, how can I say this? You, you need to have a certain protocol in place. First of all, you should get yourself a calendar when you're working on your credit. Now, I'll go through the steps of what you need to do and what you don't need to do. First thing, do not challenge or dispute or any of that stuff online. Don't do it. Second, you want to get a copy of your credit reports. If you have to pay for them, pay for them. It's eight bucks. $24, okay? Just go ahead and pay for it. Then once you get those hot credit reports in your hand, there's a few things that you need to do. First of all, you need to delete your addresses. Any address on there that is not uh, the ones you want to be there. Because see, this is there's this thing called verification, right? Verification works like this. Oh, look, we have this address on file. That's verification. I'm serious. So when it comes back verified, you're screwed. So you want to get rid of those addresses. Then your first round of challenges, you, you've got your credit report. You, you've already done the verification thing, right? What you want to do next is go ahead and challenge everything. Now, there's a letter you can use. There's one online. It's just like, hey, this item on my credit report is not accurate. That's all you have to say. This item is on a credit report. It's not accurate. Please investigate. Don't lie. Typically, they're going to be off a few points here and there. Second thing that you need to do is send out your challenges all at the same time. Don't like Tuesday, send out this challenge. Next week, send out this. No, no, no. <clears throat> you want all of your challenges to go out on the same day. Then you mark it on your calendar. You put this on. It's like, okay, they got 30 days to investigate. However, those 30 days include time to ship. So let's just say you give them 37 days. So 37 days on, you put that, you know, from the date that you send that stuff, you put it on your calendar. Then you wait because typically they're going to be slow. Then you go ahead and you're like, okay, um, because there's two ways you can get stuff off your credit report. You can get off your credit report by challenging the item, or you can get it off your credit report by challenging the credit bureau. Now, this is why you got to have the calendar. Once you have the calendar, then you can, you know, say, I'm going to sue the credit bureau. And a lot of people will not do this. Most folks will not do this. And what happens is that they get to slide because Here's the way the Fair Credit Reporting Act works. Anyone who has, let's see, how can I say this? If they have 30 days to delete something and they, and they, don't, they don't have 31 days to delete some, they don't have 32 days to delete, they don't have 34, they, they have 30 days from the point that they get it, right? And if you, and this is how I got stuff off my credit report, that was true, uh, I had tax liens, Oh God, what else? It was repossession. There was, was now understand this was like 17 years ago. Um, there was all kinds of crazy stuff on my credit report and I got it off because following this manner of getting, keeping that calendar, that calendar is very, very important that I was able to force them to remove stuff because they were like, essentially, you send another letter to the credit bureau. You're like, look, I'm going to sue you because this investigation wasn't done at the proper time, right? 
and they'll just go sue us. They don't really care. Why? Because they know that 99.9% of the people who say they're going to sue will never sue. That's not going to scare them. But when you go down there and you file in, <laughs> in court, you file and then like, okay, well on this day and they get served. Oh man, stuff starts coming off. But see, the thing is you have to send it certified mail. You have to keep a calendar. You 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 got to be on this stuff. You cannot be lackadaisical, all right? That's, that's just one way. The other way is the traditional way where you go ahead and you get rid of that stuff through challenging it, then waiting 30 days, then it comes back, so much is removed. You challenge it again. But see, the thing is, you can run into a problem where they will say, hmm, we don't know if we're going to say this, you know, if it was verified, we ain't gonna, we're not going to invest again, investigate it again. So that's the reason I say, go ahead, get rid of those addresses. Now, you could do this two times, three times, four times, five times, uh, six times, seven times. It could take some people a year. How do you get rid of medical bills? There is a certain stipulation of HIPAA. HIPAA is the, there's a certain way. All right. I used to work in healthcare. If you remember a long time ago, you go to the doctor's office and you see all of your medical records just out, right? And then now you go, they're, behind, they're in this uh, cabinet, they're behind stuff, they're, uh, they're sealed. Well, that's HIPAA. So there's a certain way that they have to deal with your medical information. And also, a lot of these collection companies, you they have no right to collect from you. They have none. And a lot of people don't know this because there is no contract between you and the collection company. The contract is between you and that first bank. There is no paperwork. There is no nothing. Also, um, just to put this in perspective, never ever pay collections unless they're going to delete because it's not going to improve your credit score at all. It's not going to do anything. And a lot of people are really shocked to hear that. Uh, they're like stunned in some cases. But essentially, when you pay a collections, the collection company is like, thank you. We really like that. We appreciate it. Right? It does nothing for your credit score. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So your credit score, if your credit score is garbage, it's going to stay garbage. So don't even worry about that. Then also with the collections, you, you've got, let, let's, let's throw the scenario. Say you have a collections with U.S. Bank, but you want to have a relationship with U.S. Bank in the future, right? Well, you cannot pay that collection company. You would have to pay U.S. Bank. And what you would do is call up U.S. Bank, send them a check to the bank, to your old account, you, you may have some of those uh, bill statements around, put the check in there and pay them off and they'll take it. And what they'll do in turn is pay the collection company, whatever the collection company paid them, which really could be a few cents. I mean, seriously, it could literally be 50 to $10, 50 cents to $10, if that, you know, and $10 being like a 20, $30,000 balance. So when the collection companies get that money, they really, really rake up, but it does nothing for you. Now you go ahead and you pay U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank says, "Oh, wow, thanks." And then you can possibly have a relationship with that bank because no bank that you've burned is going to allow you to come back into their good graces. Um, it's just not happening. So that's why you just don't pay collections. That's why you don't. Now, also, um, here's another little thing. And it kind of goes back into having a permanent address. Let's say when you file for your, when you, when you apply for a credit card, you, you want to have a standard address, right? And you want to have a standard phone number and you want that phone number to be Google voice. That way, if something goes bad, then all that stuff would be going to that address and it'll be going to Google voice. Cause you know, someone said on one of my videos, 
I think it was the how to get a hundred thousand dollar credit card. All that stress. I'm like, I just started laughing. I was like, really? You don't have the right information because if you have this one address and then all those phone calls are going to a Google voice number. Hold on. Uh, your phone ain't ringing. It ain't ringing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't ringing. So <laughs> that's just one of the ways you could do it. But hopefully you will not get in trouble because uh, I have this. I have a, a standard address. I have a, a phone number that I always put down on applications. And if it ever goes bad, I'm not going to ever have to hear from them because they'll be going to this number that's not hooked up to my phone. All right. So that's another way. Now, like I said, part of getting through this process is you have to make more money. I've said this in the you know hundred thousand dollar credit card video, and I, I had a lot of dudes, dudes, moist dudes, wet dudes, just going off like, "Oh damn, I gotta make more money." What? I don't want to make more money. I just want to have. Get, get get this hundred thousand dollar credit card, but here's the thing: if you don't make more money, the chances of you repeating the sins that you repeated are going to be great because you don't make any more money. Oh, make more money, and you know we're going to talk about that a little later. But part of the let's see the thing the 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 mandate of getting better credit is making more money, also having a plan because when you don't have a plan you're going to <laughs> really really catch the mails so like i said the first part that like i said fixing credit is not hard it's just time consuming you have to be diligent now let's go on to the section of enhancing your credit let's say you have really good credit right you, you got like a seven something, 720, 735. That's, that's really good credit. You can pretty much get any interest rate. Like once you get past 720, the differential in interest rates is marginal. Like, oh, instead of paying, you know, $12 a month, you pay $12 and nine cents a month. You know, it's really, once 720 is pretty much, you're good. So you want to get it better so you can get the juicy stuff. So this is what you do. You call up all your credit card companies and you ask them to raise your credit limit. And you say, well, can you do this without a soft pull? Depending upon where you are, where you are not, you know, you, it may be permissible, it may not. So let's say you have um, 100, let's say you have $10,000 credit lines. That's everything, right? So you go up and you, you, you call all of them. He's like, hey, I wanna raise my credit limit. I want more credit without a hard pull. Hard pull is they go to your credit report and you if you got credit monitoring, you'll see it. It's a hard pull. A soft pull is they have a relationship with you already, so they can look at your credit report anytime and they can just kind of look at it and like, oh, okay. So if you know everyone that does a soft pull, get that you know, say, okay, do that. Now, if you have credit cards that are mm, somewhat rough then you may have to go for the hard pull but it just kind of depends upon your situation so you got this ten thousand dollars in credit lines then after one evening now you've got 25 because uh, let's say chase raised your limit america express raised your limit wells fargo's raised your limit citibank raised your limit you know all of a sudden you've got ten thousand now this is the thing i want you to hear me on you can have let's say five thousand dollars worth of debt right and then you are maxed out your credit score is going to drop right now let's say you have that same five thousand dollar limit of five thousand dollars of debt and you have forty thousand dollars worth of credit available on your balance right so it only looks like oh you're only using like what not you know less than ten percent because ten percent of forty would be like four grand. Yeah. So you're, you're right at a little bit under 10%, but it's the same amount. You can get more credit. You can, it, it's really knowing this. And this is something that many people have told us. They just like struggle with. It's like, I don't want that much credit. 
I think if I get that credit, they're going to do something to me. Or I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm going to charge it up or get some discipline. Okay. Get some discipline because for you to play that game and what I, well, what you have to do is you have to have your credit limit and then there's the limit on the card. Say the limit on the card is 35,000, 50,000. Your max limit, let's say it's 50,000. Your max limit on that credit card that you're going to carry a balance is five. Regardless of whatever. Once you get to five, you stop spending. You, you just can't mess with it. Yeah, you got 55. You have a $50,000 credit limit. But once you reach five, you're done. You got to do that. And that's going to keep you from getting in trouble. That's going to keep your credit straight. And you just across the way. So let's say, you know, six months down the road, you did the first Apparama. Well, I, I got ahead of myself. You you did the first thing where you raised your credit score. You raised your credit limits and you got like 25,000. Okay. The next stage you do is called Apparama. Apparama is when you apply for three to five credit cards in the same night within minutes of each other. You just, you know, you can have them all filled out just. You'll usually get two, sometimes all five of the credit cards. All right, so when you get that, your score is going to take a hit. It's going to take a little hit. But once you get the cards, then your score is going to rise. It's like it's just going to jump because let's say you had the 25, and then you get three out of the five cards on the Apparama. And so they, they typically credit card issues tend to match or exceed your current limits. That's why you want to get those limits up higher. So you had 25 now you got 40 or fifty thousand dollars in open credit limits fifty thousand dollars and then you know your score is going to tank a little bit it may not because last time i did it, it didn't tank it actually went up so your score is going to zoom it's like really zoom because the more available credit that you have the higher your score will be it is really an interesting concept because let's say you're twenty thousand dollars worth of debt, right? But you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of credit lines. You're not even a, you're you're not in your ten percent. Well, you're twenty. Yeah, you're you're probably because ten percent would be fifteen grand. So you're a little bit over, but you still look good. Your credit score is still going to be high. But if you're like twenty grand in debt and you only have twenty thousand dollars worth of credit cards, your score is going to suck ass <laughs> it's gonna tank it's not gonna be really really good so that's how you enhance and you know doing that you're gonna go from probably like 735 to 812 810 812 i mean literally 70 80 points but the thing is you got to keep those utilization low so that's one of the ways uh, another way um the dude who got the $100,000 credit card, his score went up 100 points. So he had a 580, now he's rocking a 680. It went up 100 points because they gave him a credit line increase. 100 points. And he had, like, really, you know, tore it from the flow of credit. And then after time, after we, you know, clean up some stuff, he's going to be rocking, like, an eight, probably six to eight months from now maybe 10, let's just say a year. But right now, and here's something else. If you have 680, 690, you can get most stuff. You know, yeah, 680 is not a 735, but a 680, 695, that's considered good. Anything above 680 is considered good credit. A lot of people don't know that. So if you got like a 680, a solid, like a 695, you can pretty much get a house. You can get cars. Your interest rate will be higher, but you know, if you pay it off quick, like I advised, and you know, it's not going to be a big thing. But 680 is really, really a good score. And a lot of folks don't know that. <laughs> They're just like, oh, I got the seven. Also, only time that you need for your credit score to be high is when you're applying for something. Typically, most people only apply for something here and there. Um, you know, you got people who are doing the points game where they're applying for credit cards, getting these free tickets. If you're doing that, yeah, you need your score pretty high because mo most of the time you're going to be applying for stuff like once a month, you're going to be applying for stuff, right? But for the average person who's not playing that game, 
only time your score has to be high is when you apply for something. So you go ahead and do what I said with the, you call it the banks, raise my credit limits, then you do the Apparama. Your score will tank, but it only tank for like, if it tanks, one month to three months, then it, it zooms up. So, you know, that, that's one of the craziest things about this whole thing with credit. It is how much available credit that you have, not your debt. And I'm going to say that three times. It's not about how much credit you have. It's not about how much credit you have. It's about your debt. And it's, well, actually, I'm all confused. It's, it's really not about your debt. It's about how much credit you have. There we go. It's not about your debt. It's about how much credit you have. If you have a lot of credit, you can have a lot of debt. And then you will really, really be getting to rock out. So we'll take a little moment here. Let's see what's going on in here. Good Lord. What's up, Jay Fleming? Goldmine. Sylvia, Victoria. What's up, Durance Town? Do we hear <laughs> okay, uh, Apex, Monica, Lamote, Latonya, what's going on? Sherry Baker, what's up? Dante, what's going on? Superman Clark Kent, <laughs> that's funny. Edward Lewis, what about hard limits on your credit report? Uh, there is, what about the bureau? This, I, I covered that. That's why you want to get rid of those addresses first. Daniel Krantz, uh, what's up, Archangel, Superman, um, Valles Brown. You have to send off the letters to fight the credit score. Let's see. Restart your stream. That's funny. All right. What's up, Jen Swindo, Ben the Barton. Google Voice is a lifesaver. What's up, um, Mr. Safety Forever? That's funny. Heavenly Fire, what about Lexus Nexus reports? Isn't there to clean? Uh, no, don't even worry about Nexus report because that's not where they go for your credit. Nexus reports, Nexus Lexus is some totally different. Uh, about me, can these moves help people with bad credit from student loans? I'll talk about that in a minute. Ask Chris Trades, what's up? G E W. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, good morning. I heard that this thing added as an authorized user with trade. Yes, it is. I'll talk about that in a minute. Matter of fact, I'll talk about that right now. One of the ways, let's say you, you're rocking like a 485, and then you go out and you have grandmama or your granddad. The grandmama has bulletproof credit. She's got trade lines that are 30 some years old, not used at all. If you go ahead and like grandmama, grandmama, grandma, add me to your trade lines. I don't need the card. I just need you to add me, be there with grandma, sit there and get her to do all that. Your score could literally go up 200 points in 30 days with the authorized user thing. But you got to find someone that likes you, that trusts you, they'll do it. Uh, what's up, Mac D? Uh, yes, if the bank finds that a person is selling their trade line, the bank can shut down their car. Yes, yes, they will. But, all right. <laughs> what's good, Brunch for Rich Winters? Daryl Rivers, whoa, what's going on? T. Leah, what's going on? Aiming to get higher credit limits for business credit by boosting my consumer credit cards. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that now. Let's see. All right. You're going to have to do what I just said with getting them to raise your credit limits, Apparama, to get your credit as high as possible. Because really, this is the thing you need to get the business. You just need a high FICO score. 680, 720, you're good. Then start applying for business credit cards. Uh, Jaha 1974. The problem I have is using cards as a second source of income a lot because things cost so damn much. Uh, Jaha, stop that. You cannot use your credit cards as an extension of income. Cheap signs. 
<laughs> what the hell? Uh, D actors, does check systems and credit bureaus? No, two separate bureaus. Uh, hey, Leslie, what's up, L. Jordan? Latoya Jackson, my score dropped to 650, but I was still able to buy a home. My issue was student loans, debt to income, but I'm still working on it. I understand it's better. Thanks. Um, what's the student loans? Okay. I hate to break it to you, but you're going to have to hand on those. You're going to have to do whatever you need to do to get your student loans. There's two things that you cannot really do anything about except let me, let me step back from that. Um, if your student loans are like really old, you might be able to get them off. If they're really old, if they're like fresh within like less than 10 years old, you're going to be fighting an uphand, uphill battle. So you, you got that problem, but you're going to have to handle that. Another thing is child support. If your child support liens and stuff are fresh, you're going to have to handle that. Uh, yes, you can do that arch angles, remove a chapter seven before seven years. Uh, Roz, Buzzwell, great info. Of course, recently I had to learn the hard way when I went to purchase a car. Ouch. Uh, here's something else too. Hold on. There's something called underwriting. You should know if you're going to get something or not get something before you go to the dealership, before you go to the bank. You, it's real simple. You could go to you can go to Equifax, you can go to MyFICO, MyFICO.com. That's what I use to monitor my credit reports. And then you can know what your real FICO score is, what the bank's going to look at. That's what you're going to know. And there's something that's called an enhanced score where they may give you 20, 30 points for a car or loan or something like that. Mark D, uh, current business owners. Uh, let's see, Mark D, I'm a current business owner, five years. Is it wise and does it help my business credits to open up lines for suppliers? Kind of depends. If your suppliers do not report, it does not help you. I know that's really not what you want to hear, but if they don't report, it's not going to help you at all. It'll help you with that particular supplier, but not your, your stuff. Yakima Coles. Say something is not accurate when it's lined by a mission. How do you get rid of old addresses? Uh, actually, you came along. That's not true. I'll give you an example. I had a situation where the amount was inaccurate when my wife got the car repossessed. We owed like 12, but on the credit report, it was 15. It was inaccurate. So usually a lot of that stuff is jacked up. Ask Chris Trades. Oh, how do you get rid of old addresses? You go ahead and challenge them and say you never lived there. But if you're going to be, you know, uh, Pollyannish about it and you're going to do the right thing, you're going to get screwed. Just letting you know. Ask Chris Trey, student loans do affect your score. <laughs> student loans do affect your score. And well, it just depends on what's on there because you cannot miss payments, but you can get the deferment messed up. And next thing you know, it reports as a late and you're screwed. Duro Hills. What about multiple ads to a few people that like me or should? No, don't do that because is there's only so much mileage you're going to get out of that. You only need one or two. You don't need like a bunch of them. Plus that person runs the risk of being shut down and having their credit card turned off. Uh, Markeisha Shelton, if you pay uh, if you pay off debt through collections, do you ask for deletion. Uh, a lot of them won't do it. They just will not. I mean, you can ask, but if they're not going to do it, do not pay them. Because uh, it's just and also let's let's really talk about that. You ever noticed for those of you with bad credit that there is the original trade line, and then the collection company comes on, and that's like a secondary trade line. So it's the same debt, but it's on your credit report two times, right? So they can go, okay, we'll take this money, right? And we'll delete it, but you still got the bad credit from the original trade line. They can't do anything about that original trade line. So that's problematic. You want to go, if you're going to pay, you want to go to the originator, the one who you went bad, was this USA Bank, US Bank, Citibank, Wells Fargo, American Express, Chase Bank. Any, you want to go to 
them direct and just send the money to them. That's what you want to do. You don't want to mess with these collection companies. Uh, they will jack you up. Oh, uh, the authorized user, uh, my daughter. I put her on one of my credit cards. I can tell you it was a price line. And her score was 720 in 30 days from nothing. So it is. Uh, let's see. I'm a, oh, let's see. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm aware of that method. I once again, G, I would stay away from that. Uh, before I call to raise my credit limits, are the banks updated every month on my activities? Yep. Best time to do it is for your statement cuts. That means your statement drops and you will be good to go. Uh, let's see. Ask Chris Trace. I add another credit line, drop my ratio huge. What do you mean by that? Also, there's something that's called your average age of accounts. And let's say your credit profile is really thin. You don't have any cars that are over seven years old. Every time you apply for some, your average age of credit goes down, which is not a good thing. Uh, just trying to make it. How about someone just starting out with no credit? How would you get their credit history started? Oh, there's two ways. You can go to a credit union. They can give you a starter card or you can get a secure card. Do not get one of those little cheap, um, crappy secure cards. Uh, get a real one, one that's like um, 5000 or more. What's up, Uplifted Productions? Uh, Jaha, 1974. Any tips on cutting down utilization? Paychecks only go so far, but I'm forced to use cards. You, you, once again, you, you got to make more money. You got to stop using your credit cards as an extension of income. Events Empire, what about having good credit, but two years after bankruptcy, can IPS for business? Um, depends. It, it really depends. Like I've seen people come out of bankruptcy and like two years later, they got like 760 because they, they have. But the thing is, they didn't have a lot of crazy stuff. But that bankruptcy could still be hard. And a lot of times they're going to ask you on the credit app, have you filed bankruptcy? So that may not work. <laughs> My student loan is from 1996. I've been ducking and dodging these fools for a long time. Determined. Uh, you might just challenge it. It's so old. I saw companies like to boost my score, but you know, of rather, you know, like I said, G, I mean, you can use that stuff, but it can it really go bad on you. Edward Lewis. You gonna you just file. You're gonna have to wait a while because they're gonna be looking for you. Leslie, do I need to get a Duns before I apply for business credit? No. Sure thing. Uh, looked at my scoring line. It was a huge difference when I got to the car dealership. Okay, let's talk about this. Did you look at myfico.com? Myfico.com gives you your FICO, Credit Karma. Uh, all these, these, those are vanity scores. Unless you get a true FICO score, that's not your real score. And there can be a 50, a 20 to 70 point variance. You want to get FICO, F I C O. Uh, Latoya John, my student loans are old, but never missed a payment or defaulted. I just owe back. How can I handle it anyway? Uh, same to you, make more money. Let's see, where are we? Where are we? I graduated culinary school in 2005. The school closed. How can they get the student loan remover forgiven? Dante, wow, that sucks. Um, you should have did that in 2005 because there's a part of the law where you can get, you know, if the school closes, then they got to pay back the loan. I would go ahead and challenge and look at that. What about unpaid lawsuits? Damn, the Hectrix. <laughs> Possibly, if it's an unpaid lawsuit, it's going to be a judgment. You can possibly get a judgment removed. It depends on how e how eager they are to come after you. Let's see. If I want to become an authorized user, do you have to become a – no, just one or two, Lamote. Create a lot. 
Uh, this is a good question. Create a lot. But don't you need a business up and running for at least a year to apply for business credit? Nope. Um, wow. Asterisk. Uh, cheap ass signs. Sonsy, where can you find copies of the letters to send to? Just Google it. Okay, okay. Is another way to boost your credit limits to max out the card and pay down every no. Just don't really let it run up that high. Uh, do banks look at three to five years of credit history or less than 22 to three years or just over a credit history? Sam Log, it's really all about the score. If it's a score-driven model, if your score is above what they need and there's no derogs or anything funny on there, you'll get the card. If your score is below, they want. Now, when you get to manual underwriting, then that could come into play. Sure thing. Uh, Fuki Akito, does paying your mortgage on, on time help? Yes. T. Lee Osborne, my student loans are 99. Wow, my payment <laughs> is 850. I'm dying. Good Lord. Uh, M Stacks, 850. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, they just closed last year. Well, go online and look up, look, do this. There is this thing, I forget what it is, but when the school closes and you have a student loan, there is something that you can do. Like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with that, but I would get on that. Um, no, do not use self-lender as garbage. Lamo, thank you. <laughs> Mark D. Is it the best to pay off an old credit card seven years old? They recently sent a letter that states they can't do anything less at any point. All right, uh, Mark D. Is this account still open? Because if it's past seven years old and it's charged off, that's coming off your credit report anyway. Latoya Jackson. Oh my God, I was just feeling down about paying 140 month a month for these two. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying leverage your own score to pull out business credit? Well, create a lot. I'm saying leverage your own credit. Edward Lewis, is there a letter to take off hard inquiries from where you apply for scholarships? Because I have a lot of them. You would have to challenge them each. Okay. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into business credit. Now, you, all this hard work you did, you, you went ahead, you got a high credit score. Let's say you're rocking a 732. You're pretty much good for business credit there. Now, what you can do, what you can do is go ahead and go. I'm going to talk about whoever that was that said uh, applying for business credit when you don't have your business. You're going to need your business. You're going to need a name. You're going to need an LLC. But if you have a job and you got like a 720, you can apply for business credit all day long. The criteria to get business credit is not that hard. And part of that is going to be with, let's see, it's your financial footprint. Let's say you have a job, you start, you're going to start a business. So you start a business, you do the LLC, you get all that. You go to the bank and then they're going to ask you, what are your sources of income? How do you pay? Well, I have a job. Okay. And they're going to do run that business app off of your job income. This is why, you know, don't quit your job to start a business. Don't do that. And you could get anywhere from, depending upon, you know, how much money you make. I have a friend, Mario, when he had a job, he went out and lined up like seven lines of credit, 20,000 each. He just boom, 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 went lines of credit and everything. And then he started a business and it was kind of rough for about two years and then it took off. But he did all that before, so you can definitely do that. Let's see what is in the chat room here. Taylor, so if I get my grandma to co-sign me and current my current fico, I can see. All right, she ain't co-signing you, Taylor. Your grand, this is what your grandmother's going to do. Your grandmother is going to 
call up, let's say she has a Chase car. She's going to call Chase, say, hey, I want to put Taylor on my car. His name is, his social security number is this. Boom, right? Then 30 days after that, your score could be 630. So that's how they do Apex level. Thanks for the info about the FICO score. G. I always thought something was too good about credit karma. Yeah, I mean, they, they juice you up. Do you recommend any methods how to boost consumer credit cards? I saw companies offering business credit lines up. Um you, G E W kind of look at the realistic aspect of this. You got bad personal credit. You think anyone's gonna give you $150,000? I mean, seriously. Uh, Daniel Katz, Katz it. I took off all my hard inquiries just from challenging them. Most don't you keep a record. You don't get it if you don't get approved. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Rain and May, what happens when bankruptcy? How can you build up to that? I mean, you could do a secure credit card, which is pretty much going to be your only option. Or you can wait. Well, it just depends. Uh, if you don't pay the business credit cards, oh, well, it's going to go on your personal credit report. So that's the thing you know. a lot of people understand. It's just like, it's not just going to stay on the business. Once it goes bad, they come after you hard. Mark D, listen to this, man. People, don't quit your job unless you can handle the fight. <laughs> uh, Charles Penny, how often can you apply for credit limit increases? Usually every 90 days. 90 days to 60 days, depending upon the credit card issuer. Hey, that's grandma voice. I mean, that's that's really what it is. Now, with uh, the business credit, let's see, let's go here. If you have a job, and let's say, let's just throw a number, you make 80, 65, 80,000 a year, you could probably, and you have a FICO, FICO score of 730, you could probably get 250 to half a million dollars in business credit. And your business ain't doing anything. A lot of folks don't know that. Now, if you have issues, you're going to have issues getting business credit. Sure thing, Raina. About millions. I was told I could sell all my loans for 25 aside from raising the money. What should I don't do that. You all right? When you sell a loan on your on your credit card, it comes across in your credit report as a derog. Don't do that. I mean, if you're gonna take the L, take the L all the way. Don't take half an L. Broderick Disru, I want to sell my car, but it's upside down. I want to sell without affecting my cosigner. Uh, Broderick, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna have to put some money with that to get rid of it. You, uh, however, upside you. I hope you're not terribly upside down. But you may have to put a G or two G's with it just to get rid of it. Leslie, what if you don't, what if they didn't do that so well with the car, but it's 20 years old? Will you have, if I'm reading your question correct, someone that you want to use as an authorized user, you want to look at their history for the last seven years. If the Lavin, you know, essentially you want them to put you on the credit card that has no lates, no derogs. And on time payments. That's the one you want. If it's got the rocks, it yeah, you could inherit the good and the bad. Yeah, uh, yes, Latoya, two years. Fantastic Vic. Glendon, I used to have a loan with Ford in 2003 and stopped paying the car in 2008. A law firm collection agency has been trying to collect from me since 2011. Should I respond and deal with them? Well, let's see. 2011, right? So you stopped paying in 2008. And it's 2017. It's 10 years, man. I mean, you know, they can't collect. After seven years, it's really six months, six years and nine months, most of that stuff drops off your credit report. If it hadn't dropped off your credit report, if you challenge it, it will be gone. I know you touched on the subject before, but the leading in bankruptcy is four years after the charge, uh, charge off. What's the protocol? Well, once again, it depends. You can challenge it. It depends on how many things are attached. There's so much that goes with that. Well, no, you can stay with Credit Karma and Credit Sesame. You just can't look at their scores. Their scores are garbage. Big Red, what's up, Glenn? After watching a lot of your videos, come realize it's all about your mindset. Yep. 
Uh, my credit's not bad. I have excellent payment history with enough in collections. I just got to pay down the utilization. It's not a how amount at all. I'm interested in paying higher limits. Okay. Uh, GEW, raise your, raise your income. Raise your income. Uh, by, by the way, that four vehicles, first hybrid kept breaking down. Terrible. Damn. Charles Penny on pre pay for hustle camp. Can't wait. Thank you. You can't stop the hustle. Good deal. All right. So now we're going to talk about the thing that people don't want to talk about. Okay. You, you got to increase your income. All right. Every one of you who are coming up to me like, Hey, you know, I'm trying to pay. There is no fast way to pay it with your current income and your current income is not going to help you pay this off. You need to raise your income. You need to, let's say, let's say Craigslist. All right, you create yourself a Craigslist hustle, right? Then you go ahead and let's say it makes you a thousand bucks a month. You take that thousand dollars a month and you begin to pay off your credit card with the highest interest rate. All right, so you do this four or five months down the road, you pay that credit card off, right? Then you keep hustling. And you take that money, that thousand that you made from Craigslist, and then you add the money that you were paying to this other credit card. And then you add the money that you were normally going to pay, minimum payment, whatever. So maybe you got like 1500 2000 Bam, you start putting it on that credit card. Pay that one off. Then, you know, eight months down the road, you got two credit cards paid off and you've got two to three grand to pay off bills. Then you go ahead and pay off those bills. Pay them off. Then, you know, and this is for GW, you're in the position to really do something because as long as your utilization is high, I know someone who has a 735, they applied for some and got turned down because they had reached the exposure limit. So just because you have a credit high credit score, um, the exposure limit is real. And that, that's how you do that. Let's see. The actor, should this video be behind the paywall? This is so much good information. Oh, no, no. Uh, I said I was going to do this because there is more. Uh, depends. What's up, Raquel? Uh, would you recommend challenging closed by consumer or closed by grant accounts that don't have a balance that has been closed why do you want to close them, Tiana? I don't understand. I mean, why, why do you want to challenge that? Craig Cooper, prepaid first payment for Hustle Camp. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, good deal. Same log as a barber. Is, is it smarter to say I make more on taxes or increase money that goes in the bank? I got my car off bank statement. You know, it's really interesting. Um, I'd say tell them the truth because... I've, you know, like I said, I've been self-employed. I have a business. And one of the things that I do for, you know, getting stuff is I say I'm an employee of my company. And they're like, are you an employee? Yeah. Here, you want my pay stub? And I'm good to go. Apparama. But uh, GE, if you got high utilization, you're not going to get the Apparama. It, it ain't going to happen. I'm just letting you know that right now. It's Apple Rum. Let me just go ahead and type this in here because you can look it up because there are people who have made it a preoccupation on getting credit cards. It is beyond wild. All right. Now, let's say, let's, let's throw out some scenarios. Let's say you are broke dick Danny. You don't make a lot of money. You your credit is shot, and you're just like, what do I do? So here's the plan. Number one, you've got to manage your money. So you got to go on a no Twinkies, no cable. Like you, you got to cram your budget down. You you got to make it where the out monthly outlay is so small that 
a mouse could afford it. Then the second thing you have to do is increase your income. And increase your income can be anywhere from $250 a month up to $5,000 a month, whatever. Increase your income. Then you need to get a secured credit card. You want to be at $5,000. You do not want the $100 limit. You don't want the $200 limit. You don't, that's, those are toy limits. Toy limits beget toy limits. You don't want that. Then you're on about a year journey anyway. So between paring down your living expenses and you know putting money towards your, your credit, and I'm going to say if you have a bunch of collections, you have a bunch of uh, stuff that is really jacked up, and let's say it's two to three years old, I'm going to recommend that you don't pay it. I'm going to recommend that you don't talk to them. I'm going to recommend that you just give them the big egg because paying your bills, which you should do, is not going to help you on your credit repair journey or your business development journey. It may actually hold you back because you're putting all this energy into it. So don't pay them. Don't because it's not going to help you. It's, it's just really sad that there is like, no way of you know paying off your debt. It will help you if you're trying to get a house. You know, it's like you pay all that stuff off. In fact, a lot of them will make you pay that off before they give you a loan or for a mortgage. But yeah, it's it's really really sad. But that's what you're gonna have to do. That's what I had to do. I had to do that. I had to go through that rugged two and a half year period where all of my stuff was jacked up because I did fix my credit because, you know, fixing your credit isn't that hard, but I didn't have any money to spend on the credit. I was walking around with a 735, 740 score. I had no money. You know, uh, I was making more money with rent a crate. When I got to the point when I did that thing with GC Solutions and I made 30 some thousand dollars in like six weeks, I was like, whoa, that was life changing. I mean, I had enough bread to pay my rent, um, pay my car note, and I still had like $27,000 left over. And I was like, oh, this is how you do that there. This is how you do it. So you, you got to figure out a way to make more money. All right, let's see. Good morning, Coach Main. Edward Lewis, I want to buy a house, but I'm using the VA loan, but told, that I had to have a 620 credit score, but I also told that was that I had to wait two years. Yeah, that's on point because the VA, you know, if you got like six, six, six eighty, you get in the house all day from the VA loan at a discounted interest rate. Uh, let's see, Daryl Rivers. Uh, I'm sorry you may have answered my question already, but I had a phone call come in and may have missed it. Sorry, hopefully. I okay. Uh, M stacks, why not file chapter seven? I mean, some cases you may have to. I don't even really know, it just depends on what kind of person you are. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mark D. I've been trying to increase my income too much fake stuff out there. What do you recommend? Well, Edward Lentz, tell me about you. What kind of skill sets do you have? Because, see, this is the trap. What do you recommend? I, I, there's so many things you can do, but see, the thing is, I don't know you, and I'm not trying to be an asshole. It's just I don't know you. I don't know what you can do. I don't know what you can't do. Um, that's just the reality. So you have to figure that out, not getting a recommendation from me, because I'm going to tell you something. When you figure out some stuff, you can make more money, and uh, with the Craigslist thing is I made let's, – let's just go ahead and say the Craigslist marketing plan. When I figured it out, and it took me a while to figure it out, it took me like three months of working on it. But when I figured it out, it was like literally pressing a button and printing money. But it took me three months to figure out. So you got to figure out whatever that is that you can do. Um, computer skills, what kind of computer skills? Because I'm going to tell you, if you're like a programmer, that's whack. If you're an app developer, that's hot. If you are, I mean, once again, you got to root around in it because the thing is only you will know what interests you because I will tell people all day long, start a service, but man, I don't want to do that. Um, 
I don't want to do that, Glenda. Uh, I, I'm not trying to cut grass. I'm not trying to wash car. I'm not trying to do that. Okay, well, that's all I got. D you notice I didn't even go there with you? Because <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do that, Glenda. I don't want to do that. So that that's a big part of it. It's really a big part. Now, let's get to the part where you're fixing your credit because fixing your credit is going to take the average person <clears throat> three months, <clears throat> excuse me, three months up to a year. That's what that's that's what it's going to be. Because you got to send out your challenges and you got to wait. But while you're waiting, you need to be working on a hustle and your hustle needs to be elegant. It needs to be hardworking because the thing, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing is the same. Reduce your burn rate, money that goes out, and increase your money. However way that you can do that. I'm not going to recommend getting on the pole, but <laughs> that's what it takes. <laughs> that's what it takes, you know. Um. Uh, I am a safe serve instructor. It's hard to find consistent and steady income. Jeff Lewis, you may have answered this already. What's the best site to check your credit scores? MyFICO.com. All right, let me explain something to you. And I'm going to put this in here. MyFICO. That is the only place you're going to get your FICO score. Everyone else, unless you got a credit card that gives you, and it's a FICO score, that's it. Uh, let's see. In Hustle Camp, do you advise hustles that work for you? Or advise hustles that tell it's the. Let's see. Do you advise, advise hustles that work for you, or advise hustles that tell it to the person? Uh, if I think I'm reading you correctly, it it, it, <clears throat> it depends on how bad you want to get out of your situation. I mean, that's really it. Uh, let's hear Joe. He may be asking, do you need a credit repair company if you don't want to make the time to do it, but but read, save yourself money. I would say do it yourself because no one else is going to be on it like you will be on it, hopefully. Anyone try to get on the full holler? Y'all look funny. Uh, Leslie, getting into the trucking world, need capital, got 760 FICO, no collections on time. Any advice where to go? and get some cash capital on average still working full-time okay uh leslie you need to come back and watch this because essentially if you know where to go you can get like 150 dollars business credit now there's a way that you have to talk to these people because the thing is if you just go in there like hey i want this loan and you fill out a certain way it ain't gonna happen but yeah you could realistically get 100 to 250 thousand and business credit. Yep, yep, yep. So let's see, where are we with the time? Oh, perfect. All right. So for those of you who want some assistance, hold on a second. Um, uh, what is that? Nope, that is not the one. All right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What I'm gonna do. And I think, there we go. I got a course. I know, I always got a course. Uh, build, repair, and enhance. I was looking at it, and I need to revamp this course. So, I am going to revamp this course. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to replace some stuff. I'm going to fix stuff that's outdated. I'm going to add stuff to it. I think this is... There's one part in it that's missing, I think. But anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to hit, I think I'm going to hit save, wherever that is. There it is. So now this course, make sure that it is. There we go. All right, and I don't know. Anyway, oh, 
what I'm gonna do is $150. I'm gonna leave it like that. Let me just go around here. And for those of you who want more, hold on a second. Let's see. Where the hell is it? It should be. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff here that you cannot buy. That's funny. Because uh, I've changed that. Hold on a second. Ah, here we go. Make sure. Okay. So that, that did change. Let's go here. Oh, yeah. There's been some changes up in here. Some changes. Big changes. Huh. So let's see, where is it? Okay, so that took place. I don't know why. I guess I'll change it sometime. So essentially, this course is now 150. I'm going to give y'all what's the time. It's 11.15. 11 so I'm going to give y'all probably to the morrow i'll do that yeah so 11 15 to the morrow to get that and i'll just put that there so 50 percent off you can get that so let's see what is going on <laughs> what, 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 what let's see Uh, see, a serious start for businesses about five cars on there. Mark B. Yes, Craigslist is very serious. Coach, man, I'm a logistical beast trucking. It's not, it's not starting a venture. That's funny. I use Credit Karma. It's totally free. They alert you to, yeah, but see, Credit Karma doesn't give you the real score. Rob's about to pull. They will put some money on it. Not speaking from personal experience, but I know some chicks that pay cash for cars and houses just saying, meanwhile, I'm over here in IT at the university. <clears throat> <laughs> That's funny. Let's see. Ben Napara. Ben looks at the poll. Ben, make this money. Don't let it make you. <laughs> Uh, took about a year to fix my credit on my own. Worst hello wrote letters and emails and calls. The FICO forms has hella info, hella info from folks that have fixed theirs. Build and repair. Mark D. Um, disruptive money will not help you. All right. So let's see. Hold on. Let's go back in here. Because like I said, I'm going to do the 150 for the credit course. Because there's a few things in there that you will not get anywhere else. And let's see. We will go here. For those of you who want to, there we go. Weekend Hustle School. There's uh, some I'm doing like this because if you notice, Hustle Camp's like $13.50 and it's probably going to stay there to the end of the month or maybe well in October. I don't know yet, but that's what it is now. And then there's Weekend Hustle School, which is just how to flip stuff. For folks who are looking to get in a Hustle Camp, like I can show you, because right now we're on the philosophy of risk management, name your company. Because uh, what I'm doing with Hustle Camp is creating something that makes sense, where you do one thing, you do another, and it is congruent, if that makes sense. So, you know, I will do probably this one today. Okay, yeah, so I'm getting close to that part because, you know, that's just the basic credit course. And then for those of you who want more, then that's going to be the course that's going to get you the ability to 
talk to banks because here's the thing you can go out and you can get a course and well no there aren't any courses like that you can go out and you can go apply for a business loan but if you don't know what to say you're not going to get that loan or you're going to get a much smaller level and i'm telling you from experience it is really crazy that just knowing what to say knowing how to be cool because I remember when I was starting this business and I went into the bank and I set up my accounts and, you know, the bankers always like, Hey, let's go ahead. And, you know, you're going to be taking credit cards. Right. And I was like, Oh God, here we go. So we do all that. And the guy comes in and he's sitting there and I know I'm not getting that account because the thing is, this was a consulting business and, you know, the payments were like 40, $50,000 a year. I mean, a month. And I'm like, they ain't going for that kind of risk. I already know it because I've been through it. I used to own a furniture store. Consequently, furniture store has like the highest risk of any business. And we were just sitting there and he's like, oh, when I said, yeah, you know, and we'll be doing this and doing this. And he's like, yeah, we can't record this. And did you know that when a merchant account and the merchant account exchange is when you use your visa and then later on the bank gets paid, right? You know how long it could be? For that bank to get paid it could be 160 days 180 it could take up to 180 days for when you swipe that visa the money comes out your account it's just floating out there for 160 to 80 days and this is why when you signed up for your merchant account that they were doing credit scoring because it you know he explained it to because it's like why do you need someone's credit score when you're going to get your money like that he said well and consequently we don't get our money like that it could be up to six months just a little tidbit to you but you know this kind of stuff just to let you know i've been in the situation and yeah it's pretty interesting how these things can go all right so let me come out of here and let's see what's going on in the chat room uh right Uh, let's see. Amex gives you your FICO score, Raquel. Okay, cool. What comes with Hustle Camp? A lot. CJ Lee signed up for Hustle Camp this Friday. Quick question. Is the cold calling course in Hustle Camp? Yes, the cold calling course will be in Hustle Camp. I'm moving everything to that. Uh, yes, it took me six months, but I had everything in order to make the moves. Leslie. I don't know what, what's going on with that. So let's see. And Patty's helping you out. Barak. Baruch. How do you say your name? Just curious. Because one of the things that happens with doing all this stuff is let's say you know what let's talk about the price it's 1350 for hustle camp now you go like that's a lot of money and you know what you're right but it pales in comparison that if you go through hustle camp successfully that but let's just keep it really low let's say you're in hustle camp and you get 1500 bucks a month that you know of so your first month you're like 200 bucks ahead. Then your second month, you're 1800. No, not, yeah, about 1800 bucks ahead. Then your, let's say your first year, you know, you, you do 1500, 2000 consistently. You're like $27,000 ahead. That's incredible value because name one stock that gives you those kind of returns. Name one that's not illegal. So, one of the reasons that I'm doing, and I understand this isn't for everybody that I'm raising the price is I'm trying to get better people and I'm trying to create a community of folks who are ready to do something because it, it's, it's going to be rough out there. Aren't you in the military use their USA, their credit reports across the three. If you try to get established. 
Uh, T. Leah Osborne, does Hustle Camp help insurance agents? You have an agency or you work for one? Yeah, CJ Lee Gray, they need those cold calling sisters to grow my sales because at this natural rate, I will never be able to quit my night job. I thought you had like a, a cleaners or, or this is another business you have, CJ Lee. I'm just curious. Um, Baruch. All right, thanks. Appreciate that. But, you know, in terms of fixing your credit and it, it's it's a I'll say it's simple, but it takes time. Uh, does Hustle Camp help barbers? Let me think about that, because, you know, a long time ago when I had hair, um, I used to go to the barber shop. Because I, I really I'm able to think about that, because the, the problem with being a barber is you are the business unless you have the shop and you rent chairs. And then unless you have the shop, rent chairs and get another location and rent chairs where you can then in turn become a business person. So I'm going to I'm going to say maybe I'm, I'm, that's not a hard yes for a barber. It just depends on if you want to do something else. I have a dry cleaners, but I still work in the coal mines from 11 to Sam, 7, 11 p.m. to Sam. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. T. Leah Osborne. Uh, this is how Hustle Camp's going to go. Eventually, it could help you because the way that I'm doing Hustle Camp is I'm doing the foundational stuff first. You know, get your budget. And then we're going to get into the cold calling and the sale. So it will help you, but that's going to be further down the road. But it would make sense for you to get in now because when I get there, I'm probably going to raise the price. So, yeah. Uh, credit line. Tell them the truth, Glenn. You have to be generating more money to get a credit line. No point in borrowing money you can't pay back or flip to make more money. Well, I've always said that. Make more money. Make more money. That's that's been saying that. How many times have I said that? Hello, it's the credit course part of the weekend hustle track. Let's see. You know what? Hold on. I can actually tell you because like I said, there's been a lot of stuff that's going on. So hold on a second. And, you know, to um, create a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about, you, you got to make more money. You, you got to make more money. You have to, it, it's imperative. No. That's kind of funny. I got the child support course there. So, no. And Weekend Hustle School is going to be dope, dope, dope. But no, it's not part of uh, the credit course. It's not part of that. Sherry Baker. George said, poor people can never afford any of your courses. Uh, George, I'm going to say this and don't take offense, but when these courses were for free, poor people wasn't taking the courses. You know why? Because poor people didn't value the courses because they were free. I did this free. These courses, yeah, I gave these free. So I, I know what you're saying, George, but the, th the thing is, and this is something that really gets on my nerves, is you should not aspire to be poor you should aspire to change your life because you're right. I am no longer down for the common man. I'm not trying to help the common man because the common man ain't trying to help himself. And I, I, I learned that lesson after watching my email list. Like I, I totally killed my email list and I, I did that because this is what happens for those that know. I had a lot of those courses for free and this was the grand vision. I was going to help people, people going to use these courses, and then they were going to buy my upper-end products, right? Wrong. It didn't happen. 
Patty can tell you. Patty's up in there. That she's look. That a lot of people who sign for these free courses never took them, never cracked them, never did any of that. So, it, you know, it, it's just no. I, I'm I'm done with that. I did it for damn near eight nine months, and it corrupted my email list. It corrupted. It was a lot of bad stuff, and I just learned that poor people will fuck you over. Uh, I never have found a way, any ways to make more money because every video sees a scam or a con. Uh, George, uh, seriously, you got to improve your attitude because every video you see is not a scam or a con. Mark D, poor as a mindset, George. So get out of here and get get that bread. Appreciate you, Mark D. Craig Cooper, they can afford the payment plan. <laughs> Which course, Paul Brown? Oh, I love this. CJ Lee, poor people need at least 500 hours of mind con reconditioning before they can buy the first course. Oh, the fixed credit, oh, that's 150 bucks until tomorrow. Tiger, yep, take action. Frankie Guns, when are you going to revamp the bit rebuild course? Um, I'll start on that this week. Sam, went into barbershop with two other barbers partners. Barber shop is upstairs. I have two open downstairs spaces. I used to were to hire a masseuse and create an after school. Wow, um, that's a lot. Sam, Sam, same old log 100. That's a lot. Pare down your businesses. Get one good business started before you start doing all this other stuff. Uh, R Changes, thanks. I'm your target market engineer, MBA, three failed businesses looking for a mentor. This came at the right time for me. Wow. You know, that's funny. Uh, you need to offer the course about renewing your, your mindset. Mr. 6,000, poor people don't. Sup, this message hell for you. Hold on. I'm broke Dick Danny. I'm a personal trainer who's independent contract. I have horrible credit plus student loans. I'm not paid yet. I need help. Wow. Yeah, Baruch, uh, the common man wants common. I I'm done with that. That stuff is crazy. I appreciate that, George. Tiger Shark Seals, I follow Glenn's advice that was free from 2009. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm much further along the journey and triple my hustle income. That's cool. That as well. Okay. Well, that's what's on the table. So if you want that, you can get it. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and hold on a second. I'm going to get in there. So we, we will be talking about some stuff. All right. So essentially, here's the deal. You want everything, it's 4500 bucks, and we'll go up as I raise the price of this. Weekend Hustler School, this is just about flipping stuff because here, here's the thing. Let's say you spend $700 to get Weekend Hustler School, right? And then do you, based on the information that is in the course within three months, let's just say three months because, you know, first month, you know, you got to learn some stuff. Let's say you make $3,000 you were up 2300 bucks and then you kind of like gag along you know that really hit it hard and you do like a thousand bucks a month so that's like twelve thousand dollars a year you're up eleven thousand three hundred bucks then next year you're up like twenty thousand bucks so this is how i'm pricing my courses because 
when they were free and when they were cheap, I got free and cheap people. And what I mean by that is I got people who didn't they're like, oh, that's free. I'm not even going to do it. I'm, I'm serious. And, you know, that, that's just it. So, hey, if you know you can find some cheaper, cool. I, I understand. appreciate you. But the price is what the price is. And we can hustle camp. It's $13.50. And I have to change that because there is more. And also, we're going to do the T-shirts because you're going to get. Ah, so you get all of this. But see this and this, these two courses right here, that's going to be worth the money. That's going to be well worth the money. So I'm just saying, because let's say you have an LLC and you didn't set it up right. Or let's just say you pay someone to set up your LLC. You can spend anywhere from 600 bucks to 25,000. So I'm going to teach you how to set up your LLC. I'm going to teach you how to set up your business credit. So once you start looking at it from the true value of it, it's like it's not that expensive. But if you're just like, man, that's just thirteen hundred fifty dollars. Oh Lord, yeah, that's yeah, Glendon out of his damn mind. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> All right, so that's Hustle Camp, and I'm going to change that in there, and then Weekend Hustle School. It's just a pared down version for the folks who just want to, you know, hustle. Plus, um, this does have hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Weekend hustle school, which has not started as the child support course. Yeah, because I figure a lot of weekend hustlers going to need that. The diary of a hustler. I'm going to fill that up. So this and this will have to be there. And then the 30 days to 2,500 for physical products. That one is more truncated to physical products. So that is how that goes down. And let's see, what else do we have here? Um, let's see. I'm sorry, I don't blame you, Glenn. You know you're worth it. If you're honest, I know you're not ready to actually start business. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Mark, did you, let's see. I found Glenn a week ago. I guarantee that you listen to Pi, you can make some bread. I went through a house and sold some after listening to him. <laughs> that's really cool. That is really cool. Uh, Hustle Camp is legit. The price keeps qual keeps quality. Cheap gyms bank on people never showing up, but Orange Theory charges 100 a month, and most of their clients show up. Skin in the game makes a difference. Indeed. Paid off car loan, 62 payments, but Chase says I owe more money. I was contracted for 60. Uh, you got to talk to them. I mean, seriously, you got to you got to fight that because that's 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 more of a contract dispute than a credit dispute uh creel at this point for anything of real value online you have to pay for it if you don't research yourself which takes longer people need to stop thinking making money online is the free game amen all right so I want to say thanks for you folks for coming in. I will see you later and be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you feel that any one of those packages will be of value to you, just go ahead and grab one of those. And with that, I will check you guys out later.